it's important that we understand that money, that money matters. Money matters. It, 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 it matters on your job. It matters in your relationship. It matters in your marriage. It matters at church. It matters in the world. We can pray and believe God for a lot of things, but when you go to MSGNW, they're going to want to check. Like, it, it's, they, they, they want money. You get what I'm saying? And so, so money is important, and it, and it, and it matters. And, and one of the things uh, that, for me, that was difficult for me early on when we started Innovation Church, it was, we were a younger church, and I really, really was, was careful about what I ministered and what I did not minister. So I would talk about money. We did a sermon series. I forgot what it was called, the first one. Um, I forgot the first one. It was Jamie was in it. But, uh, but anyways, but we, we talked about money, and we, and we dealt with money. But it, it was, I, I, I wanted to be not careful, but I didn't want to over-minister about money because of my experiences and what I saw. And, and we have a lot of individuals that's first generation of Christians. So you come from the street and you're in the barber shop and they say, man, all preachers crooks and all preachers, you know, man, they in it for the money. So I, I would teach on it, but I wouldn't teach on it yearly like I do certain sermon series, which is I think is important that I teach on it more often than I have. And so last year I taught on it and I taught on it with more passion I feel that I'd ever taught on it. And I feel that God blessed and it liberated so many people because so many people really needed to hear it. Jesus talked about money a lot. In 39 parables, in 11 parables, he talked about money. Many believe that he talked about money more than he did almost anything else. He talked about heaven, he talked about hell, and he talked about money. Scripture communicates money, finances, over 2,300 times. And so money is important because we need money. Money matters. In marriage, 20 to 40% of marriages end because of money matters. Money matters. And so we, we got we to gotta have some money or we got to communicate. We got to be on one accord as it relates to money. So money, money, money matters. We got to talk about it. We got to deal with it. We got we to, gotta, you know, we got we to gotta get some type of understanding on, on money and on resources. I also went to teach it at this level because of what I saw in, 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 in other churches, and you will have people, and, and I'm not ashamed of this, well, I'm not, a, I will speak to this with boldness, because I will see things, and, and I felt, and I knew, I didn't think that that was of God, to where, hey, we, we got, you know, how many of y'all going to give $100? I mean, y'all give a $100 line, we got a $100 line, a $500 line, a $1,000 line. This is, what it, this is what it produced. It lets your right hand know what your left hand is doing. And so here's the $1,000 line. So who's the $1,000 line? All right, all right, all right. Randall, come on, stand up for me, Randall. You're the $1,000 line. Stand up for me, Randall. Stand up. Randall, Randall going to give $1,000. And uh, let me see who else give that. Preston, come on, stand up. You give $1,000. Preston, give $1,000. So Preston got the $1,000 line. So Devin, this is what was concerning. They got the $1,000 line. So now I know maybe as a preacher to where, man, they, they acknowledge. I'm going to call their name. Preston gave $1,000. Randall gave $1,000. What that's going to do for Angela is Angela going to say, hmm, I'm going to be acknowledged. I'm going to like a baller and a shot caller if I get a thousand dollars so I'm gonna get a line and get a thousand dollar line as well now this is what I perceive that some people may have done let me pray for you and lift up your hands so lift up your hands come on the thousand dollar line God bless her with a new house God bless her with a new house God do it for your glory bless her with a new house oh God now now, now guess what Tim gonna get in a thousand dollar line because Tim need a new house and Tim need a new car so now I got 12 people in a thousand dollar line now, now, some of y'all may not be able to give a thousand, but what about five hundred dollars? Give five hundred. So, and then you're gonna come through. Then I'm gonna read your name. Uh, everybody who gave five hundred, everybody who gave two hundred, and I just felt some kind of way about that. And I don't want to. I don't want to bring that to to the house of God. I don't want to. Like, what are we doing? I feel like that's counter scripture. Like, why, why, why is that how we raise tithes and offering? Thank you, thank you, y'all. Now, oh God. Now, 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 the thing is, is this: what we have to do as believers is. We have to, when we talk on giving and we talk on money, we need to give it. When God pricks your heart, you need to do what the Word of God says do. Because when you don't, this is the, see, this is the bind that it puts some pastors in, not me. Okay, they ain't going to give if, if I don't have some type of gimmick for them to give. I got to give them a gimmick, and I got to tell them God going to do this and God going to do that. Then they may give because they in this, little, you know, this gimmick stuff. This prosperity gospel, 
I believe in prosperity, but not a prosperity gospel. And so they, 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 I, I can do something, something gimmicky, and they'll do it. Because everybody that's getting the $1,000 get the good prophecies. So because y'all won't give any other kind of way, offering is this high now because I, I use the gimmick. But when we teach on it, we still don't give. So now the pastor is like, man, we got to pay this mortgage. We got to do this right here. And so let me just be gimmicky because we, we don't give just when we get the, the word and we taught on it. All right. So we ain't doing it. We teaching the scripture. We teaching the word. And you're going to obey the word or you're not going to obey the word. And it's on, it's on you. But money is important and money matters. It, it matters, it matters, it matters. Look at, um, look at Luke chapter 10, ch- chapter 16, verse 10 through 13. Come on, Sister Angela. All right, listen. So we're going to do this real quick. So how many of y'all know what cap and no cap mean? If you know what that means, let me see your hand. You know, like, you know cap, no cap. Y'all know you know what I mean? All right, all right. So here we go. We're going to practice. It's a practice round. All right. So you're going to say cap or no cap. All right. You ugly. All right. You're very nice looking. Somebody said cap. All right. All right, here we go. So money, here we go, we're doing it right here. Money is the root of all evil. Come on, come on. She said, what, what you say? I'm going to say it again. Money is the root of all evil. Cap. All right, we're going to go into scripture. All right, here we go. Luke 16, chapter 10, chapter 16, verse 10 through 13. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. If I, if you can't be, if you, if I give you a little bit and you're not honest with a little bit, you can't be honest with a lot. If I give you a little bit and you're honest with that, you can be honest with a lot. Let's go. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you? With true riches. If you ain't honest in hun- handling worldly wealth and your money, so, so God know that, that I can really get to determine how your heart is and who you are by how you handle money. So, so look at what the word, look at scripture. I want to see who you are. Even when people, they, they, you get credit re- uh, reports. They want to know because I want to read your credit report because it's going to let me know who you are. It's going to tell me a lot about you with how you handle your finances. All right. Now, this scripture, and if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? If you're faithful with a little bit, God will make you rewarder of many. If you're not faithful, then God won't make you rewarder of anything. All right. Let's go. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Can't serve God and money. I got a partner man who tell me he want to be a millionaire. Why you want to be a millionaire? What, what, what you want to do? Like j- just to consume it? Why do you want to be a millionaire? Some people just want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire for me and my family. You know, yeah, I'm going to give. Right? And here's the thing. If you don't tithe and you're not a millionaire, don't think that you're going to tithe when you become a millionaire. Oh. If you ain't tithing and you get and you get five thousand dollars a year, you ain't gonna tithe when you get fifty thousand dollars a year. You get fifty thousand dollars a year, you're not gonna tithe when you get five hundred thousand dollars a year, because tithing is about a tenth. It's a, it's about the tenth. So the millionaire who makes a million a year, the same one hundred thousand is required for him. If you only make ten thousand dollars a year, then that's, it's a thousand dollars that's required of you. So don't. If I get enough, then that's when I tithe. No, no, no. Your, your heart is your heart wherever you are. All right, here, here it is. Now, the love of money. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish... Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Man, you, you chasing the bag. You chasing the bag. You're chasing the money. You're chasing the women. You're chasing, you, you, you're trying to uh, allow your resources to allow that to be security in your life. You're chasing the bag. Let's go. For the love of money is a root of all Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money. Because money matters and we need money to pay our bill and we need money to do what we need to do. 
We need money to go to the marriage retreat. We got, we got to pay for that. It ain't free. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so we need that. But the love of it, what are you willing to do to get it? Are you willing to rob, steal, kill, cheat? What are you willing to do to get it? For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Some people that are eager for money has wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. Because I prayed for a job, God blessed me with the job. Now the job say I can't be at church the way I need to be in church, and I done left God for the job. Now I understand I got to work and I got to get my resources, but sometimes you got to have faith and step out on God. I need you. I'm talking to them. I, I got to be in the house of God because I can't allow what you bless me with to take place of you. You are the giver of the gift. And sometimes we begin to worship the gift rather than the giver of the gift. God never wants you to worship the gift. He wants you to worship the one who gave the gift. We're stewards over what God has given us, meaning that we're, we're managers over what God, everything that God gives us, we don't own it. Leonard, when we leave here, guess what? It, the money in your bank account going somewhere else, your car going somewhere else, the house going somewhere else. We're only stewards. The house you own around the, guess what? When y'all move out the house, somebody else is going to own it. Guess what? When y'all leave here in 100 years, somebody else is going to own it. So you're only stewarding what God has allowed you to steward. Like, that's not your house. You understand? It's not yours. You, you're, 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 you're borrowing that house. He's allowing you to manage that house while you have it. He's allowing you to manage this family while you have it. One day when he come back, you're going to be gone. And so, so for this time that God have you here, this time that God has all of us here, we're stewards over what God has given us. So God give us 100%. How, many, how much of the 100% belongs to God? All of it. God give you 100, but the 100 belong to him. Sometimes we think that, 90, that, that 10% belong to God. Nope, 100% belong to God. We're only stewards over what he's given us. So all 100 belong to God. Now, he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to give me back the 10%. All right? I want you to give me back the 10%. Not for me, because I don't really need your money. Like, like, so like, you know, think about it. We talking about God. God said this, the cattle on a thousand hill is his. They belong to him. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even ask you for nothing to eat. You can't do nothing for me. So the tithe ain't about necessarily him. It's about your heart. How do you view money? How do you see money? The money has taken precedent over me. It's become your God. Look at, look at Malachi chapter 3. Because what is taking place in the word of God. Because tithing was before the law. It was before the law. So now here's the law. And look at Malachi chapter 3. I, the Lord, do not change, so you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Wait, wait, go ahead. Will a mere mortal rob God? Will a man rob God? <laughs> Old school, he said, will a man rob God? <laughs> will a mere mortal rob God? See, some, like, like if I ask you, are you a robber? You'll say, no, I ain't a robber. Will you rob God? If you saw God, no, I wouldn't rob God. I wouldn't put a ski mask on him and rob God, but some of us rob God every week. With no ski mask. You rob with no ski mask. You, you don't even put the mask on. You, don't even get, you ain't got no gloves on them. You rob them in just, just by sitting and not giving him a tithe. That's tough. That's, that's, that's it. Here we go. But you ask me, how, do, how are we robbing you? What you talking about, pal? How are we robbing God? Like, man, I ain't robbing God. Man, I got, made my money. I gave him my $45. And then, you know, I'm going to keep it keep moving. How much you make? Well, you know what I'm saying? I made 3000 you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to give him 45 I'm going to give him 45 I'm going to give him 45 <laughs> But you ask how we robbing you in tithes and offering. That's how you robbing me. So if I make $100, how much is God asking for? At least 10 But he's asking for more because a tithe is a tenth. And so where's the offering? That's, that's above the tithe. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay, let's go. Uh-oh, this is the part that be making me paranoid right here. Go ahead. You are under a curse, 
your whole nation because you are robbing me. All right, that, that, that's all I need to hear. I don't, I don't want that. I, I, I don't want that. I'm, I'm, I, see, I, I'm, I, listen, I, I, I'm, listen, when it comes to the Lord, I'm shaking. I'll be scared. I'll be scared of stuff like that. Like, I'll fight a I mean, whatever. I don't, I, I don't, like, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. What did they say again? Let me go back and study that. You're under curse your whole nation because you are robbing me. So if I don't rob you, if I don't tithe, then I'm robbing you. And I'm under, I don't want nothing, I don't want nothing to do with that. I don't want none of that. Let's read. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. I gave $75. Is that the whole tithe? Of $3,000, it's not the whole tithe. A tithe is a tenth. That's just something that you gave. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord. The Almighty. only place in the Bible where he said test him, Colin, is here. So no other place did he say test him. Matter of fact, he said don't put the Lord thy God to the test. But when it comes to this, about your resources, about your money, about your finance, why don't you go and test me so that I can show you who I am? Test me and see if I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Test me. Prove me. Listen, come on. T test me. You holding on. You love it so much and you consume with it so much that you just, you, you just, you, you won't even, uh, yeah, you, 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 you're not ready. Your, your heart is not right. The posture of your heart, I have not taken precedent in your heart. I do not sit on the throne of your heart, and God want to sit on the throne of our hearts. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the, window, the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. He says, see if I won't test me and see if I won't open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive. And then he said this right here, go verse 11. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. Oh, come on. And the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before, time, before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. In other words, because we ain't got no, 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 no crops maybe or, or vines. In other words, you know that car that they said that you got a transmission problem and you're going to need a transmission? You ain't got to get the transmission, though, right now. You God going to let you ride and, and, and stumble a little bit and stutter, but he going he gonna to prevent that. You having to go in to get one really soon. The wash machine that you really need to get another one, God going to just do a little something and allow that wash machine just to not, not, not break all the way down. He going to allow the brakes on the car not to squeak super loud. He just, but for your sake, I'm going to do this for your sake. I'm going to allow the crops and your vines in the field, they won't drop. I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to keep some stuff going. I know you need some new stuff, but I'm going to just get in it and, 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 and get in it and do something so you can keep on wearing what you've been wearing and you ain't got to go and flip right now. I do that for you because of your old tithe and your offering because you decided not to rob me. I said, I'm going to do some stuff. I know I'm preaching to myself. It, 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 it's, it's, well, you know you're going to need a transmission. God, do it, God. I don't, I don't want to buy no transmission right now. God, do it, God. God, do it. Why the car shake? Be quiet. We just ride right now. And before you know it, it stopped shaking. God, thank you, God. Seven months later, we still ain't had to buy the transmission. Thank you, Lord. How many months later? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We still riding. We still riding. Thank you, God. How y'all doing? Y'all doing all right over there? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I prevent the, the pest from devouring your crops. You know you need some more stuff. And God said, I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to be extended for a little bit. So we got to make sure that, 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 that we're tithers. All right, four types of people, four types of people. You got people that, uh, uh, that this four people group based on financial status. All right, so people that are struggling, all right, people that are struggling. So that means that the struggling individual, you have more month than money. Like I, I, I make 2000 a month, but my bills, 2400 a month. I'm, I'm struggling. So every month I'm in the red. Like, we, I really, I'm, I'm struggling. Like, I ain't got it. You got the strugglers. You got the surviving. I'm surviving. Like, I make 2000 a month, but, but I, I, my bill's 1900 a month. And every now and then I get a little break. I can, I, I can do some every now and then. I'm, I'm maxing my credit cards out, but I'm, 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 I'm surviving, you know. I can do a little something. I can give a little bit, but, 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 but I'm surviving. Then you have the people that are successful. You know, I don't, I don't. 
I don't really live paycheck to paycheck. I have some extra. I have, you know, I have some left over. I save a little bit. Every month, you know, I'm able to save. Every paycheck, I'm, a- I'm able to save. So I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat successful. You know, I make, I make a, a pretty decent amount of change, and, and, I, and I make more than I, than I spend. I'm, I'm relatively successful. I can do some things. I can buy a nice outfit, and it don't, it don't really hurt me. I used to live paycheck to paycheck, but I don't have to live like that anymore. Those people are successful. And so sometimes we, get, we become content when we experience a level of success. But, but we have to go from being successful to being in the surplus. To where moving from, I, 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 I got money in the bank, I'm saving money, to I'm investing my money. You understand what I'm saying? There's a different mindset. Now, now, now I'm investing money. I ain't talking about no, look, I am investing. Now it's time for me to get a financial advisor because I need some help on, on investing my money and what are really good investments because I have a surplus. Because every time I get paid, I have over and beyond what my bills say, you know. And so I'm operating in the surplus. And so we have to move and, and, and understand that this can be for you. Sometimes we get stuck, and this is what you. T- this is why I want to challenge you. I don't care if you're on a fixed end. I don't care where you are. You do not have to be struggling and surviving. You can eventually believe God to operate at some level in the surplus. Yeah. I want to stretch your faith there to work because some, some the enemy has intercepted some of our faith and said, no, I never, if I can get to the successful place, I'll be all right. I've been so used to struggling and so used to surviving that if I can just experience a level of success, I'll be okay. But God said, look, God, God I believe God want to get you to a place of surplus. Do you not know that I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to succeed, to, to receive it? So that's the surplus. I ain't got room enough to receive it. I got so much, I only had room to receive everything I got. I got so much, I got to give it away. Some of y'all got so many clothes, you got to give some away. Your closet ain't big enough. My, your closet ain't big enough for everything that you got. You got to give some of it away. Some of you got to, it's a surplus mentality. I got a surplus re- resource and a surplus mentality. All right. Now, here we go. This is going to get tough for you right here. And that's okay. So, there's, there's, I, I, I was reading, and this, this is so important right here, and it blessed, I, I shared some of this last year. You have four individuals, type of individuals that's in the church. So, four type of individuals. So, you have one individual, that individual is a seeker, all right? That, that's a seeker. So, that means that you came, and you, you, you really don't know the Lord, and it's okay, but you're really seeking, trying to figure out who the Lord is, trying to figure out this church thing that's a seeker. I'm seeking the Lord. I'm seeking, just trying to see. You know, I'm watching around. I'm observing. I'm checking out the men here. I'm checking out the ladies. I'm checking out the setup. I'm checking out the video. I'm seeking. God is doing something in my life. He's trying, you know, I'm just really trying to see if I can do this church thing. Those are seekers, all right? And then you have new believers. I got saved. I ain't been saved that long. Been saved maybe a year or two, you know, but I'm a new believer. And then you have the third individual is the immature Christian. All right, I'm a believer, but I'm an immature Christian. In other words, I'd have been saved, I could have been saved for 15 years, but I'm still immature. You get me? It don't matter about the length of time. It's just, it matters about have you developed into maturity yet. So I'm still immature. And then you have the mature believer. So, so you are one of those four individuals. You, 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 you're in one of those categories. So where are you? Are you a seeker? Are you a new believer? Are you, imm- are you a new a, a, a new believer, are you an immature Christian or are you a mature Christian? All right. Let's talk about the giving, all right? So this is what happens with the giving. So the, the seekers and the new believers, check this out. So in this church, in every church, the seekers and the new believers, all right? So we, we, we got all of them here. So you're here today. You're a seeker, you're a new believer, you're immature, or you're mature. But a seeker and a new believer, they consist of, they make up 30 percent of the church's population. So the seekers and the new believers, it's about 30 percent of y'all here today. You're a seeker, you're a new believer. That's okay. We cool. I'm cool with that. They say the seekers and the new believers, they only give two percent of the giving. So of the budget, if you've been here a year, you're going to only give two percent of the budget. Like, it's just, it's going to be two percent. Like, it's just that, 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 that statistically, that's, that's where it is. You're going to put a little something in. You're going to go online. You're going to put a little 20. You, you're going to do that, 2% of it. It's okay because you're a seeker. 
it's okay because you're a new believer. You don't, you hadn't really embraced tithe and you don't really know tithe. And then, you know, now for me, praise God, now there were some things that I was slow on. I wasn't slow on tithe when I became a believer. I went all the way in. I'm giving you my first God. And I set that precedent early on. But some people hadn't done that. So it's okay. So it's 2% of the giving. So if we got a $100 today, then you make up $2 with the 30%. All right. So, so the next individual is the immature believer. The immature believer. The immature believer, they make up 60% of the church's population. So if there's 100 people in the church, the immature believer is 60 of you all. Now, that's, that's 60%. This is the concern that I have with the immature believer. Because you're a believer, you saved, you went through your classes, you fast and pray with us, but you're an immature believer. The immature believer only gives 24% of the giving. So out of the $100 that we brought in, the immature believer gave $24. It was 60% of the church because the immature believer, they just not, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm not, I hadn't, I hadn't bought it. I, this tithing thing is, uh, uh, I got more month the money. I can't. I got too much going on. Like, so I'm just going to give. I'm just going to, my tithe is going to be my service. I was sharing with a man who, who was serving in a, in a role, and he wasn't tithing. We had to have a conversation. Like, you, you're, in a, you're in a role. Now, if, you, if you're just sitting here and you ain't tired, that's, that's your, you are in a leadership role. There is a level of accountability, my, my man. Well, I ain't even going to go there. I'm going to stop. No, I'm going to stop in there. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop. But the bottom line is the expectation is for you to tie. It, it ain't in your service. It ain't in, in I'm going I'm to clean up and that's my tie. That, that ain't, that's not your tie. That's you giving up your service by cleaning up. Your tie is your tie. Y'all looking at me strange now. Y'all just have to look strange this time. Because the same way I preach about adultery and homosexuality and all of that, I'm preaching about money because it's important that you know it. Because where your treasure is, 60% of the church's population consists of 24% of the giving. Now, don't go yet. The mature believer is 10% of the church. All right? So, Statistically, there's 10% of people in church every Sunday that are mature believers. So if there's 100 people here, only 10 are mature believers. Look what happened with the mature believers. 10% of the church population gives 74% of the giving. Why? Let me, let me go over this side right here. 10% make up 74% of the giving. Calling they, because they said we, we, we're mature. We don't care what nobody do. We don't, we're going to do what God has called us to do. We don't care if nobody else gives. We don't care about anything. We're going to do what God has called us. So 74% of the giving comes from 10% of the people. Statistically, Christians give 2.5% of their income. The average Christian give 2.5% of their income. In the Great Depression... It was 3.3%, but now it's been reduced to 2.5%. 5 to 10% of Christian tithe. 5 to 10%. 9 out of 10% of Christian tithe. Let's, so let's do this right here. I want y'all, y'all ladies right here. I want y'all to stand up for me. Y'all please. Y'all five. And then y'all four, please stand up for me. All right, and uh, do we got what? Stand up for me, right? Please, yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. So this is how it looks. These ten right here. Now I want all of y'all in the front to sit down. Down here, you still keep standing. So she's the only one that tithed out of these ten people. The only one that tithed. Okay, let's go. Yeah, you four stand, please. And then you three, please. And then y'all three, please. So, I want all of you all to sit down, except you, Rochelle. Everybody sit down, please. 
out of, out of all. Now, we, we, we grow in the church. We, we give into the poor. We go in and we homeless ministry. We give in overseas. We helping families in need. But she's the only one that tithes out of all of you all. So now out of all of the 20 people that stood up, these two people tithe. And, and as we continue to move down, it's, it's, out of 100, it's 10 people. Out of 550 people tithe. That carries the bulk of the weight of the ministry. When the Word of God says, bring your tithe to the storehouse, to the church so that, there be me, so that there may be food in my house, so that we may be able to do the things that we need to do so the ministry can go forward and meet the needs of the people that need it. Thank you. See if I want, and then the benefit is this, you benefit from it. You benefit from tithing. Because when you do that, see if I won't open up the wonders of heaven and pour out a blessing that you ain't even got room enough to receive, I'm going to bless you. But tithing is a heart issue. It is a mindset. It's a mindset. Sometimes we think that we have a money problem. And we don't have a money problem, we have a mindset problem. How we see money is how we look at money, how we view money. All right, let's go. Let's go to the New Testament. Because the New Testament, Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Because sometimes people feel that, well, I don't give because it's an Old Testament practice. Tithing. And I only give. Well, look at what Jesus said. Come on, Sister Angela. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. He says, so all of it. See, y'all focusing on the tithe. He says, it's more than the tithe. I want you to give the tithe, and I also want you to practice giving justice and mercy and faithfulness. He says, so, so I want you to do both. I want you to tithe, but I want, I want you to give faithfulness, justice, and mercy, but don't neglect the tithe. So this is Jesus speaking about the tithe in the New Testament. And so some people feel like it's an Old Testament practice, and it was under the law, but it was actually before the law, and it was also in the New Testament. And some people who just don't, know how to reconcile the scripture together, they feel like, I just can't, I, I, I don't get it. There's some individuals who don't believe in the tithe, but they give above the tithe. Listen, the starting point should be the tithe. But as a mature believer, we should give above the tithe. Oh, God. Yeah. Thank, thank you, one, Rebecca. Thank you. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Okay. So, this is this where we are. Okay. So this guy got this from, 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 from a guy, and it, it, it's powerful, and I wanted to share it with you all. You have a, a bag mentality, because sometimes we, we, we chase in the bag, and we know about chasing the bag, and we chasing the things, we chasing the bag, we chasing the money, we chasing, I, I, I got to get the bag. You know, you hear rappers say it, you hear people say it, money bag, I got, I'm, I'm chasing the bag. And so we have a bag mentality. Look at Haggai chapter 1, we'll just read uh, verse 6. Hey, got chapter 1, verse 6. I'm going to let you know when to put it on the screen. No, no, put the scripture on the screen, but I'll let you know when to put the... the um. Right. Hey, got chapter 1, verse 6. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled. Let her listen to the bag uh, mentality. You, you, the bag mentality, you sow much but you bring in little. You, because you, when, the bag mentality is you never have enough. When you have a bag mentality, you consume. You consume your money, you get your money, but you still don't have enough. So you have so much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you still are not filled with drink. You close yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earn wages to put it into a bag with holes. So, so you, get, you, you get an increase, but it's like you didn't even get an increase because, it's, because God has allowed a hole to be in your bag. So even when you get more, it don't seem like you got more. You got a $15,000 increase, but, 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 now you, but now something broke. But now you got to fix this. But now somebody, you got to get something to a family member. Now, because your, your bag got a hole in it. Because you consume. You just consume. That's a, the bag mentality. You consume the money, and you, and, you, and you think about you. You think about your bills. You can't do it. 
I, I, don't, I don't have enough. We don't have, I can't do it. And there's a barn mentality. So, Linda, you got the bag mentality and a barn mentality. And this is what I want to help us with, to, to develop a barn mentality. And not just a bag mentality. I ain't got it. We can't do it. See, it's that. Well, we, we can't do it. They ain't gonna, why are we going to do it at the orphan? Why are we going to do this right here? We ain't going to be able to do this. Why? It's too, it ain't enough people. It's right here. Why are we going why, why to go to, 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 to uh, Miami? If they talking about the hurricane. It's going to be, why are we going to win? Like, like, I don't care about what they're talking about. We trust in Jesus. We believe in God. For real. Listen, y'all. I told y'all. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, I ain't had no insight in the hurricane, and I didn't know what God was going to do in the hurricane. I didn't have the inside scoop, and I knew, man, listen, bro, we finna go down here, the hurricane. They, re- they say it's the worst hurricane that was going to hit in history, or the second worst in history, in a hundred years. And we said, we just going to believe God, and we going to trust God, and we just going to go, and we just going to see what God, I didn't know what God was going to do, so what I'm telling you, I'm trusting God. Right now, I was on this side, I didn't know Listen, when, when, when God gave me the sermon, quiet, be still, and Jesus calmed the storm, I wasn't speaking that to, because I knew the storm was coming, and I'm going to tell y'all about the storm. I gave, I gave that because God gave that to me. And when God gave that to me, I ministered that to you. And then the storm came, and God got us through the storm. God showed himself faithful through the storm. And it was sunny down there in Miami. And it, my God, and the, and, the, my, and the hurricane passed over us. Now, I don't know if God just did it just because of us, but I'm going to praise him and worship him and celebrate like he did it just for us. When God start doing something in your life, the enemy try to minimize what God did in your life and tell you, oh, that was going to happen in a way. Oh, the hurricane wasn't really, really going to do it. Oh, no, no, devil, you're like, it was going to be what it was going to be, but God blocked it. God, I thank you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's what that looked like. Y'all, this was real time. I didn't go down there, then come back and say, I told y'all God was going to do it. It was real time. A couple of weeks ago, we were here. The hurricane coming. People calling. What are we going to do? We're going to get our money. What are we going to do? And we're we going to trust God and we're going to believe. And I don't know what. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what God going to do. I, don't, I, I ain't make this stuff up. I didn't. We're going to go and we're going to trust God. And we went down there and we saw what God was able to do. Had we not gone, we never would have seen the hand of God, my God. If we don't give, if we don't go, you'll never see what God can really do in your life because your hand is so stuck like this. You won't, when you let it go, you'll never be able to realize what God can put inside of your hands. I done seen God move. I done seen him move. Sometimes we can't, we don't, there's something when you jump, God said, I'm not going to show it to you until you jump. And you saying, God, you show it to me, then I'm going to jump. God said, I'm not going to show it to you until you jump. And so some of us, we never jump because God never showed it to us. God said, when you jump, then I'm going to show it to you. You got to jump. You got to give. You got to do it. Then you can see the blessings of the Lord. Then you can see the good message pressed down, shaking together, running over, men giving it to your bosom because you decided to give. Okay. So the barn mentality. Let's go. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. This is the barn mentality. Because that's a different mentality, Bodhi. That's a different mentality. The 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 uh, what, what's the other mentality? The bag mentality. I consume. I get that check and I get my money. And I give, I pay MLGW, I pay the mortgage, I do this right here, I pay my car, no, I pay all my debt, and then I give God what's left over. Yeah, we saying no, sir, but, but, but statistically, it says that 74% of people, that's what they do. Man, we ain't finna be that church, y'all. We gonna be a church. I go 100% tither. Everybody in here, we gonna, man, y'all don't wanna have no church. I need some amens, I need some, so 100 like, why can't we be there to receive the favor of God and the hand of God? I'd rather receive 90% of my money that's blessed than 100% of it that's cursed. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you don't even know what you're missing out on because of the consumer mentality, because of the bag mentality. Well, I, 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 if I do this, then, girl, you don't even know what you mean. Girl, do it and do it consistently. And don't just do it because it's law. Do it out of your love for God. 
Listen, listen. When we give, we don't give to receive. Because sometimes we play God like the, mono- like the monopoly. You know what I'm saying? Like we're going to invest. I'm going to get this $100 because I'm looking for this $1,000. Man, where did it come from? Like, like we, man, I'm giving because this is what God put on my heart to give. And if God decides to give back to me, then God decides to give back to me. But I ain't playing games like I'm going to do this right here. You know what I'm saying? You know, and and, and see, what, see what's up. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. He don't have to give back to us. But he said he will give back to us. So we don't have to give. We get to give. And when we give, we don't look for anything in return. But when we give, we do get something in return. But it's the posture of your heart. That can be the motive of your giving to get something in return. When I give to you, I'm not looking to get anything back from you. Because I want something for you and not something from you. So when we give, bam, we give because of what God has done for us. God has given us his best. He gave us Jesus. He gave us his best. He didn't give us no mess, but he gave us his best. And so when God gives us his best, it's only right for us to give God our best. A tithe isn't just any 10%, but a tithe is the first 10%. So when you give God your first and give God your best, then God will bless the rest. Y'all don't have no church today. I'm giving him my first, I'm giving him my best, and then I'm trusting him to bless the rest. Yeah, it's the posture of your heart. It's how you set your life up and prioritize your life. It's, God, listen, you number one in every aspect of my life. You got, God, I'm giving you access to all of me. I'm giving you access to to my thought life. I'm giving you access to my wife, to my children. I'm giving you access to everything. I'm giving you access to my pocketbook. I'm giving you access to my bank account. You got access to everything. Some of us give God access to this. God, touch my kids, bless my kids, bless my job, this. But you can't have my pocketbook. I, I got that. And when you got it, God will keep on having it. And you'll never walk in the surplus that God would have you to walk in. Oh, God. Some of y'all blessed, and, 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 and y'all think, well, I'm blessed anyway. Do you not know that what you think you blessed, you think that the stuff that you blessed, God want to do something more and something greater in your life, and you experience something that you never experienced? Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, run the shall men given to your book. An overflow, Elena, it's an overflow. You ain't got room enough to receive it. You got to give it to other people, man. I ain't got room enough. Man, I got to bless somebody with it. I ain't got enough. I ain't got enough garage space, man, to have all of this stuff. I ain't got enough space in my driveway. I got to get this stuff away. That's some stuff that God would do in your life. All right. So here we go. Barn mentality. Look at somebody and say barn mentality. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all. Whoa, with the what fruit? First fruits. It's, it's the priority. I get to do a lot in my life because of priority, because I honor God. It's God first. I do a lot, but I spend time with the Lord first. I make sure my wife is on point. I make sure my kids are straight. This is time I'm with them. So now I can do everything else. And the things that don't get done, don't get done. But the priority is on point. You understand? And so sometimes we do everything else and we get up, we get up running. You wake up, you just, oh, I got this. you're putting out fires, you get up running, and you end up neglecting God. It ain't that you don't love God, you just don't prioritize God. Thank you, two, three, three sisters and a brother. It's just, you just don't prioritize them. And this is what tithing is about, prioritizing God, giving him the first fruit. It was the firstborn male child, the best fruit. God was telling me, don't bring me no mess. Don't bring me no lame and blind animals. You bring me your best animals. You want to bring this stuff and sacrifice this stuff to me. You won't sacrifice, you won't give it to your governor, but you'll give this stuff to me. That's the word of God. How you going to bring this blind, lame stuff to me and you won't even give this to your governor? Don't give me your leftover. You give me the best of your crop, the best of your increase. So I give God my best. I give him my first. God take care of everything else. So here you go. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Verse 10. Then your bonds will be filled. Then your bonds will be filled. Then your what, Leonard? 
then your barns, that's a barn mentality, then your barns will be filled to overflowing. Jesus. Jesus. Man, y'all can play if y'all want to. I want everything that God got for me. I, I want everything that God got for me. And when God start blessing folks, so start hating on him, and, oh, he must, he must. You say what you want to say. I'm just stepping out on faith and believing God, not in just this area, but in every area of my life. God, if it's, if it's accessible to me, God, I'm going to step into it. Then your bonds will be filled to overflowing. And, and your vats, what? Will brim over with new wine. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's a, there's a mentality of a bag, the bag mentality, and then there's a barn mentality. So let's go to the bag mentality. This is what happens in the bag mentality. The bag mentality. Let's go back. Okay. God supplies. All right. This is what happens. So you get your check. God bless you. God supplies. He blesses you, Pip. God supplies. Now, what you do with the bag mentality, because we ain't educated and we don't know and we want to consume and we want to make sure that we safe and we want to make sure, yeah, it's good to have three to six months of, 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 of income, of reserve and all of this and make sure we have everything on point and life insurance. We got to make sure we have all that. But, but I, I got to look at it from a standpoint of being a giver as well. All right. But here we go. So God supplies. He does that. Then we consume. So we get the money, we get the check, and then we consume. It's mine, all right? So, so then once we consume, we lack. Then we lack, and now we fearful. And then the cycle goes on and on and on again. So now God supplies again, and we consume it. We lack, we fear, God supplies again. And so you continuously have that, that bag mentality, but it's a hole in your bag. You walk around with a hole in your bag because your mindset. So ain't no money problem, it's a mindset problem. So you're, you're, it's just you got a hole in your bag and you're still trying to do the same thing. And so now you're acting insane because you're doing the same thing and expecting different results. You have a bag mentality and the bag mentality was has, is what has to change versus a bond mentality. The bond mentality. God supplies. We give. God multiplies, God builds our faith, and he do it all over and over and over again. Hallelujah. God supplies, we give, God multiplies, and God builds our faith, and it happens over and over and over again. When we begin to receive the resources from the Lord, you can't get caught up where God didn't bless this, so I ain't going to tithe next month. Because you start tithing, and you say, okay, all right, uh, I'm, okay, now he ain't come through, so I'm, so I'm done tithing. Okay, all right. Okay, we, well, I'm, 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 getting ready, I'm getting ready to go. I, I want to share this with you before, before we go. So, Tori and I was married. Some of y'all heard this before. We was married, and I was supposed to get an increase on my job. I was supposed to get a promotion we had a new baby on the way. The baby came in August. We had a new, we had a new house built because it was a job that was promised to me, an increase with a nice increase that was, that was pretty much promised to me. We got a house built, found out that we didn't have any insurance at that time, and then we also found out that Tori got laid off on her job. So now we got a new baby, a brand new house built from the ground up with one income. I wasn't even making $40,000 at this time with a new baby, with a brand new house, with all of our bills. And so here I am. We have been tithing and believing God. Tor was off of work for almost a year. And I'm holding it down with not, without even making $40,000 a year. How we managed and stewarded our money prior to us being in this situation was key because it allowed us with some surplus to be able to get through a difficult season in our life. Now, we get this, however much the check was, what comes off of the top was the tithe. At this time, y'all understand, there was more month than money. So if we got to use credit cards, go into the savings, do whatever we got to do, but the tithe was coming off the top. Y'all don't have no church. 
Y'all, 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 y'all don't have no church. Because it don't matter about the circumstances. It matters about my faith in God. I trust you, God. We was asking God for increase. And while we were asking God for increase, we got decrease. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, 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 so I'm out then. I'm out. I'm asking you to bless me. And rather than you blessing me, I get less. No, I'm out. I, I ain't tithing. Because if I didn't tithe, it'll at least be a couple of hundred dollars that I can put on this right here. So the tithing, it seems like it's got me in trouble. Because I have enough money for my month if I wasn't tithing. So I'm going to take what I ain't finna pull it back. Well, I done pull it back some other areas, but I ain't finna pull it back too much in this other area. I'm going to pull back the tithe. The devil is a lie. I'm not pulling back the tithe. I'm keeping the tithe. The tithe is off the top. I'm trusting you off the top because you are my priority. So it didn't matter. It didn't matter what happened. It didn't matter what. It's God. You the priority. You have to understand that David was looking to go into the, to the palace. But before David got into the palace, David ended up going into the pit. He went into the pit, but he still trusted God in the midst of being in the pit. So in other words, on your journey to success, you may have to have, take some steps back. And in, the, in the, the steps that you have to take back, you got to say, God, even though I had to take the steps back, I'm still going to trust you. Don't throw in the towel because you experienced hardship. Don't throw in the towel because there was trouble in your life. Don't throw in the towel because there was trouble in your marriage. And so you just abort the mission. God has called you on a mission, and you abort the mission because you say, God, this thing ain't working for me anymore, so I'm just going to pull back on what I know that I should be doing. That's how we never really get to see the hand of God because we abort the mission too soon. I know I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. What if Joseph would have aborted the mission? What if David would have aborted the mission? What if we, it can, what if Jesus would have aborted the mission? When he went through hardship, when they was turning their back on him, when he was praying and, 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 and blood was coming from his sweat. Don't you think that he wanted to abort the mission? Matter of fact, he asked the Lord to take the cup away from him. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. I'm not aborting this mission. I'm going to go through with it and see what the end is going to be. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. While you was yet a fornicator, while you was yet sleeping with another man's wife, God said, I'm still going to die for you. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to come through. Ain't nobody God but God. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Don't abort the mission. I thought about it, but it was like, it was a, a, probably a quick little thought. God, God, I'm not, I can't abort the mission, God, because you didn't abort me, my God. You didn't abort me when I was a baby. You didn't allow her to abort me when I was a baby. I can't abort the mission. It don't matter how it's looking. God, I'm all in with you. The next year, not an increase. The next year, not an increase. The next year, not an increase. I don't even know when we end up getting an increase. And God blessed us with the increase. But the increase, the, my, 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 my tithing wasn't based on if God was going to give an increase or not. My tithing was based on obedience. And my tithing was based on my love and my commitment to God and my priority to God in my life. I'm not doing this because I want some in return. I'm doing this because I love him, because he sacrificed his son for me. And the least I can do is to give back to him what already belongs to him. Some of y'all dads know what I'm talking about. I take MJ to my son to Wendy's, and we get a Baconator combo. He get the Baconator, and so when they pass it through the wonder, I get some fries, and he looking like I done just, just took all of his food and, and then did them in. Hey, they give me a couple of fries. Uh, where you want, where, where you want my fries? Hey, boy, do you not understand that I bought the fries for you? I bought everything that you about to eat, and you can't have the decency to give me two fries out of all this stuff that you got? That's how God look at us. I done gave you all this stuff. I did it for you. I bought it for you. You mean to tell me, you go, God, why you want this back? You can't give back to me the little bit that I'm asking you for? You better get yourself to together. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Everybody standing. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God. What a mighty God. 
I told my wife this because we committed this to the Lord. And there's certain things that I, I really wouldn't share with my personal life, my personal walk with the Lord, because don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. And so certain things I don't even share. But I shared this, I think, a, a year or so ago, and I feel like God wanted me to share it just to, to help increase somebody's faith. I'm not doing this for any points. This is me and God. So, Tori and I, we decided that we not, it's, not, it's not just a tenth. That's the base. That's the starting point. So, every year, we got to increase that percent. Out of our love for God, when I tell you the faithfulness of God, when I tell you what I've seen God do, I've seen God blow our minds. I've seen God give back to us on a whole nother level. And we don't do it so he can give back to us. We do it out of love for him. He said, test me, try me, prove me, see if I won't do what I say I'm going to do. One point we, we, we increased and she was like, why are we giving all of this? And we just going, we, 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 we going to trust God. She's like, hey, let's go. If we got to pull back in another area, we'll pull back in another area. I just want to see what God will do. I just want to see, I just want to express my love to God and my, and, and my appreciation of how he sacrificed. It's the woman with the mic. She gave all that she had. And see, sometimes people see, say this right here, well, does the amount count? Yeah, the, yeah, the amount count. It, it, it count. It got to mean something to you. If it don't mean anything to you, it don't mean anything to God. A sacrifice is something that it means something to you, then it means something to God. See, it meant something to Jesus. When she gave her two mice, she gave all that she had. It touched Jesus. All the other folks was given. These folks was rich. But Jesus didn't say nothing about them. He said something about the woman that gave all that she had because it meant something to her. Because it meant something to her, it meant something to him. So when you give and it means something to you, it means something to God. And look at all the scriptures on giving. They talk about look at this show where your heart is. It's about you. You know what I'm saying? Where your heart at? Well, you, you can't give me some fries. And we talk about this. And he gets, here you go, Dad. Dad, you can just have the whole fries, Dad. I'm, I'm okay with the sandwich. Like, bro, like, you really serious about this? And I can imagine God saying it to us, y'all real, y'all for real? Do you not know that you got a bag, but do you not know that? You should not put your trust in money and things because money and things could be gone like this. Or money and things could be there and you be gone like this. So you can't even enjoy it. You can't even enjoy it. So everything, your, your, your life, your health, your house, your car, your, it belongs to God. And have the, God said, I just want, I just want, I just want a place. I want your heart. I, I want to have first place in your heart. Where am I in your life? I need to be on the throne of your heart. That, that's, what it's, that's what the tithe is about. I don't get a piece of the pie. I don't get the whole pie and then give everybody else some pie and then give the leftover to God. I get the pie. God, here go yours first, and now everybody else can eat. It's prioritized, and that's what God, he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God, and he won't first place. This is my challenge that as we move forward, come on, prayer warriors, as we move forward, that you put God on the throne of your heart as first place in your life. If you're not a tither, my encouragement is that you begin to be a tither and giving up your offering. Go back and readjust your, your, your finance and your budget and how you move forward. It's not about, well, I'm just going to do it out of, you know, just emotion. No, it's, it's out of love. This is how it should be. On November 11th, we're giving sacrificially. One of the most spiritual times, I said this first service container, I believe the most spiritual
spiritual moment of when I really felt the presence of the Lord was last year during our sacrificial giving. Because I believe you all stretched like you never stretched before and gave like you never gave before. Because it wasn't about, it wasn't about you. It's about God. I'm sacrificing and I'm sacrificially giving of myself and giving of a, a real sacrifice. I felt the presence of God. I was praying during that time. And when I was praying, because I asked God for an amount. And one guy said, if, if, if the amount that you're asking to give don't make you kind of throw up in your mouth, then you ain't gave enough. So, so my, get a amount, God. This is what I'm giving. I want to give sacrificially to the vision going forward. Sacrificially to the building. Sacrificially, God, what you have going on in this ministry, God. Great things are taking place. And I want to give sacrificially, God. And have a place in your, God, this is what I want to give. Even if you ain't got it yet, this is what I desire to give. I had an amount, and then I feel that God increased that amount. All right, we're going we gonna to give this. And doing service, I felt God speaking in my spirit to what? No, increase it like this. I'm like, Lord. I called Tori, Tori, listen. This is what I believe the Lord is telling us to give. Let's give it. I'm like, praise God. But when I tell y'all, how I've seen God move. I've seen him move on a whole nother level. I've seen him move on a whole nother level. And we don't do it so he can move on a whole nother level. If you're doing it for that, keep your money. It's God, I want to give to you, God. The posture of my heart, I want to sacrifice to you, God. I want to intentionally give on purpose. Yes, I want to walk in the overflow. Yes, I want the surplus. Yes, I want the windows of heaven to open up and part of the blessed don't have room. I want all of that. I want that. But I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it out of my love and my obedience to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, touch your people in a mighty way from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. We thank you, God for blessing us, God, with a heart to give. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for shaking us up. We thank you for the conviction. We thank you, God. We thank you. God, I pray, God, Lord, that the immature believers will become mature, God, and become tithers, God. God, that we see money, God, how you see money, God. God, we pray, God, Lord, that you just continue to move in our lives. I pray that the posture of our hearts, God, will be yielded to you in Jesus' name. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name.